experience, which spans several years of teaching students at a range of levels how to do research projects and dissertations, in my experience, most students naturally tend to gravitate towards doing a survey or a questionnaire. It's really the same thing. And sometimes this is the right choice, but sometimes it's not. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about quantitative data collection, what it is, why it's good and why it's bad. And I want to get you thinking a little bit about actually, is that questionnaire the best thing for you? Just because you've done questionnaires before, doesn't mean you should naturally gravitate towards doing that for your research project, because <laughs> I'm gonna say this right out there. Quantitative data, surprise, surprise, involves maths. And in my experience, a lot of my students would prefer not to do maths. Some people like it, of course, but a lot of them, a lot of students I've taught have actually said maths. Oh no, I didn't like maths at school. So if that's the case, why are you choosing a questionnaire? Because questionnaire is quantitative data, it involves maths. If I've got your attention, let me explain this a little bit more. So let's start off by explaining exactly what we mean when we say it's quantitative research. Quantitative research is research that is associated with the collection and the analysis of data that comes in the form of numbers. It's perceived about gathering facts. It's viewed as being scientific, right or wrong, black or white. A number is a number, right? Quantitative research involves measuring and counting attributes. It's a kind of how many style. Quantitative research is interested in using formalized, standard structured questioning, whereby response options are predetermined. Quantitative research is administered to significantly large numbers of people. So for example, if you do choose to do a survey, and there are other methods of quantitative data, but I'm focusing on survey because that's what most people choose to do. If you have a survey, it will typically have tick boxes or scale questions or one word answers. And this is how you are able to compare. So you hand out lots of surveys, you say, you know, let's say it's an easy question, yes or no. You count up how many people said yes, how many people said no. Now that is the most basic analysis. Is that even analysis? No, that's not even analysis. That's just counting up your answers, right? But what you want to do is to have lots of statistical tests. So I told you, maths is involved. Now there are lots of advantages of using quantitative research. It's often quite easy to use. Designing a questionnaire isn't that difficult. And I have actually gone over that at length and I will link to that at the end of this video. Quantitative research is generally well structured and we can use computers. Computers can do so many things for us. They can help us to generate the surveys. We can use things like SurveyMonkey or Google Forms rather than having to physically sit down and design something ourselves. We can also use computer software to generate analysis and statistical tests. See, see, I told you, maths. However, quantitative research, as I said, is not for everyone. It does actually require a certain familiarity with statistical methods, including the use of descriptive statistics at the most basic level. This is things like mean, mode, standard deviation, percentages, etc. And when you get to a slightly higher level, I would say degree level or above, you really want to be going further than this and looking at inferential statistics too. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe you don't want to do quantitative data, but you can read up on it, you can learn these things, but I'm sure if you are watching this video, you have done maths before. And if you don't remember doing statistics or you know you didn't like statistics, maybe qualitative research is better for you. And this is something I see so often. For my PhD, I actually chose to do mixed methods, which is when you do a bit of qualitative and a bit of quantitative. And I found the qualitative stuff so much easier than the quantitative. I spent weeks in my office reading books about how to run these tests and how to use this software. And there are softwares that you can use, which make it much easier. You don't have to sit there with a calculator. You can just press a few buttons, but it's still not easy for somebody who finds maths difficult. 
and I never found maths hugely difficult but it wasn't my strongest point and I definitely spent a lot of time learning all of this statistical stuff and in hindsight if I went back and could do it again I would just focus on qualitative research because I think I would have found it easier I would have been able to do it quicker and a PhD is kind of pass or fail so it, do it doesn't affect my grade um, but if you're you know depending on what qualification you are doing it might affect your grade and that's probably quite important to you I'm imagining so really think about this don't always just go for the survey yes surveys are great for some people but they're not perfect for everyone and remember it's not just looking at what the answers are you have to actually analyze them and dig deeper and run those tests so you might want to work out what is the average what is the mean what is the mode you might want to work out chi squared you might want to work out more complicated equations etc and then you need to have the skills to be able to have the practical application to put that into place too now this is where i would usually say there's a video on this coming soon but there won't be <laughs> because i don't feel qualified enough in the quantitative realm to be able to guide you through that and um, i'm sure there are some really great videos on youtube but they won't be mine <laughs> but if i haven't put you off already know that quantitative research can be really great and in some situations it is the only way forward it really depends what your research project is and how it works but one of the great things about quantitative research is that it tends to have external validity. This means that it has the ability to be generalized. So let's say, for example, that I hand out surveys. Let's say I'm looking at student school trips. Let's say I'm looking at school trips and how much benefit is there for these school trips. And I want to hand out a survey about students and what they thought about their trips and how they got on with it. Perhaps I could choose a case study of, I don't know, London, and I could hand out a sample, so a certain amount of surveys to people in schools in London, and theoretically, I'm not going to give a form to everybody in London, but I could collect my sample, so it would be, you know, maybe I do a thousand surveys or something, and I could, in theory, apply that to all of London, and I could say, in London, generally people feel this way about their school trips, or these are the outcomes of school trips, or whatever it is I'm researching. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Whereas qualitative research doesn't lend itself towards that, because you're not going to have such a big sample, and the data that you get is, is not easily comparable in the way that quantitative is. Okay, so let's just quickly finish off this video by covering what are the advantages of doing quantitative research. I know it might sound like I've been trying to put you off, but I haven't, honestly. I'm just trying to say, don't do it if it's not for you. Anyway, quantitative research can be really great, and here's why. It's got external validity. It's reliable. It can be applied to larger populations, which can be really great in some situations and circumstances. And it is often used as the more scientific type of data collection. Now, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if you are interested in doing a survey, I have a detailed video about exactly how you can create that survey or questionnaire. It's really the same thing. So watch that one next. And if I put you off and you've decided that quantitative data collection is actually not for you, then watch my video about qualitative data collection.